what are ringtones all about? How are they going to be where they are today? And what makes them so important? To answer those questions, we first need to ask where it all started. On that front, I will look towards the renowned expert in the field of historical ringtone research, Joseph Alcott, who had the following to say. In regards to where the ringtone started, we looked to none other than Alexander Graham Bell. But the credit for who invented the telephone is much more controversial. Antonio Mirchi invented the predecessor to the telephone, the talking telegraph, and filed a patent caveat for it in 1871. Now this may have played a key role in developing the ringtone. Not only that, but Alicia Gray applied for a caveat the same day that Bell applied for a patent for the telephone. The end result is that Bell ended up being the one to have hold of the patent. And it may just be the most valuable patent ever issued. The first recorded telephone call took place on March 10th 1876. Bell was calling his assistant, Thomas Watson, and the bell rang, sounded something like this. And soon afterwards, history was made. When he said the first words, Mr. Watson, come here. I want to see you. I remember we had a antique phone in our attic, the candlestick phone. It was very unique in its design because it resembled a literal candlestick. And its purpose was to, you know, implement this new rotary number feature, which allowed you to contact an exact phone just through an operator. We never got it to work though, sadly. The bells first used in the telephones were the actual bells installed in the base of the telephone. The bells would ring when receiving electromagnetic signals when they were being called. The bells would remain similar or exactly the same throughout many years. It would be quite impractical to have bells on a mobile phone. But there were telephones that didn't use them as well as that before. Real bells were replaced with speakers that were lightweight and very mobile. As, as the touchtone telephones of the 1960s, the sound of the bells as ringtones, however, remained popular for much longer. More variety in ringtones began to appear around the 1996, but most of them still remembered bell sounds, among the first exception, the Nokia tune. Beginning in the late 90s, phones had many preset options to choose from, which is still a standard practice used today in modern phones. Standard home phones do not have these preset options typically, but that isn't a big deal because home phones haven't made many sales out of supplying businesses in recent years. Smartphones continue to grow in popularity. The idea of a personalized assistant became mainstream as they are used in day-to-day -day tasks and even in business. So as phone cases and backgrounds became more popular, it came as no surprise that ringtones eventually became just as popular. Beginning in the mid-2000s, ringtones were no longer limited to jingling and warbling noises, but rather were excerpts from popular songs of the time. Anybody could choose to have a ringtone that reflected their taste in music. With all of our history out of the way, we can commence our look into where ringtones are headed in the future. Starting here at Nomen Corporationis, we've conducted an exclusive interview with company executive J. Word Jonah Jameson, and this is what he had to say. Ringtones have created a very profitable industry. Just about everyone has a phone, and consumers are willing to pay up to $3 per ringtone. In 2003, the ringtone industry came to be between 2.5 and 3.5 billion dollars. However, sales have declined in recent years due to consumers learning to make their own ringtones. So as ringtones went on, people wanted their ringtones to become more personalized and like 
have it be some noise they made or some phrase they like. So take this for instance. Now I just have to repeat it over and over, give it a little bit of editing, and I could sell it on InstaTunes for massive profit. Here at Gnome Incorporationist, we are committed to producing the highest quality ringtones using the latest in groundbreaking new technology. Our scientists started by looking at what makes a ringtone distinguishable, and they realized after a certain amount of trial and error that the human mind begins to create distinct definitions for each and every sound it hears, similar to how, say, uh, so one person wakes up to a particular alarm, or an animal will respond to certain sounds to perform tricks with this with in treats. mind, key experiments were held to see how humans already naturally respond to certain noises that they hear when their brains are developed. One will always look towards or react to sounds of dangerous situations. So those were the first ideas to be implemented into Gnome Incorporation's new wave of innovative ringtones. Audiences were picking up their phone to the sound of shattering glass, or gunshot noises. We could not stop there, as our scientists were eager to fulfill the idea of, why stop there? Why not more? We realized that there are sounds that only certain categories respond to. Those who grew up with household pets would certainly respond to the sound of a screeching parakeet or an unsettled dog. Sounds of danger or need. The sound of papers being blown about would not pertain to an ordinary person, but for artists and architects, that sound is a nightmare when walking down a windy street. One of our prize developments was the sound of a screaming baby, which when tested in labs during experiments, was the perfect key to mothers who would not want their child to be endangered. With our sights set on the future and beyond, the key to our current success are sounds that let your happy brain amygdalas release that little chemical that triggers the fight or flight response, tying something as ordinary as a ringtone to basic survival. That is not to say that Gnome Incorporationist is not proud to say that we are making strides with ringtone development for not only the current era, but the history of ringtones and the future of ringtones here and from this point forward. There you have it. This has been a wonderful look into the origin of ringtones and how it all leads up to the sounds coming from your phones today, as well as a glimpse into what the future of this fascinating field may be like. You know, some people are asking, are all of our scientists unpaid high school interns? Well, they are, but look, they're doing it as a job shadowing. They're getting experience from, they're getting experience from highly trained professional other high school unpaid interns. It's, it, 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 it just works. Okay. We're going to have to arrest you now.